Hello everyone. Hope you are doing well. I am Akshay Parmar, Assistant Professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology in IT ICT Department. Today we will discuss an analog to digital conversions, right? So first of all, why we are, why we need to analog to digital conversions and all that? After that, we will see the pulse amplitude modulation and the pulse code modulation, the two techniques to convert the analog signal into the digital signals, right? Right. Uh, after that, uh, we will see the three techniques uh, in the pulse code modulation, the sampling, quantization, and the line coding in brief. Right. So let's see uh, analog to digital conversions. Right. So for the analog to digital conversions, the tendency today is to change the analog signal to the digital data. After the digital data are created, we can use uh, one of them. Can use one of the techniques to convert the digital data to the digital signals. Right. So we are uh, representing the analog data by the digital signal. Why, why we need the analog to digital conversions? For an example, whenever we are recording a uh, sound wave by the microphone, it will be converted into the analog signal, right? To transmit in the tra transmission media in the transmission channel, we need to convert that signal into the digital signals, right? So for that, first of all, we need to convert that analog signal into the digital signals. Right. And after that, uh, right. So for that, the first step is to convert that analog signal into the digital data. After that, the data is converted into the digital signals. Right. So this technique is used for the representing the analog data by the digital signal. In analog to digital conversion, there are representation of the information contained in the continuous waveform. We can see that the analog signals as a series of the digital pulses or we can say the digital signals, right? So first of all, the two methods are here to convert the analog signal into the digital signals. The pulse amplitude modulation PAM and the second one is the pulse code modulation PCM, right? Let's see one by one them. So first of all is pulse amplitude modulation. In this technique, it takes an analog signal, sample it, and generate a series of pulse based on the results of the sampling, right? So sampling is the foremost fundamental thing here. So sampling means the measuring the amplitude at the signal at the equal interval, right? We are measuring an amplitude of the signal at the equal interval. That is called the sampling, right? The PAM, pulse amplitude modulation uses the technique called the sample and hold. PM uses a technique called sample and hold. It uses it uh, at the given time the signal level is read and then held afterwards. But in practically, PAM is not useful in the data communication because it translates the waveform into the series of pulses. But that pulses are still have an, any amplitude, right? But that pulses are still tail of any amplitude so it is analog signals not fully digital right let's see how it is working right at the given time the signal level is read and held afterward this is the analog signal on which we are going to apply a pam pulse amplitude modulation for that we will measure the amplitude at the particular time interval right for that we will measuring the amplitude of the signal at the particular time interval right let's see that uh, this is the analog signal and uh, we are going to measure a pam signal right so the, we will measure the amplitude at the particular given time at the particular time interval right so and after that uh, this is the positive side after that we will uh, read and whole signal right so this is the PAM signals, right? The we have we have measured the particular amplitude at the given time, and we have measured that amplitude with the particular time interval. This is called the PAM modulation, right? After that, another type is that pulse code modulation (PCM). This is the most common techniques to change the analog signal into the digital data, or we can say that the we have digitization. It is called the pulse code modulation. Form of the digital transmission that converts. What is PCM pulse code modulation? It is a form of the digital transmission that converts the analog data to the coded pulse, right? First, the amplitude of the voice is conversion is sampled and then encoded into the binary form. 
let's see how pulse code modulation is working for that the pcm encoder has a three process sampling quantization and the line coding right whenever we are giving an analog signal to the pcm encoder it will be digital it will convert that analog signal into the digital signal right so for that in the uh, pcm encoder there are three modules there sampling quantization and the encoding right as we have seen what is done in the sampling right so let's see sampling first let's see uh, pcm encoder and its three process the first of all whenever we are inserting an analog signal into the pcm encoder the signal is reached to the sampling position in that the analog signal is sampled after that sampled data we will give that data to the quantizer right so that sampled signal is uh, quantized now after that quantized data the quantized value are encoded and that's how we are getting the digital signal from the analog signal right so let's see one by one of them right so let's start with the sampling right the so sampling the number of sample of the signal are taken at the regular interval at the high frequency of the signal this step is pulse amplitude modulation as we have seen earlier right that the result is still an analog with a non integral value the analog signal is sampled at every ts second where ts is the sample interval or we can say that the period what is the inverse of the sampling interval the inverse of the sampling interval is called the sampling rate or we can say that the sampling frequency there are the majorly three methods of the sampling ideal natural and the flat top right so let's start with the ideal one so in the ideal sampling the pulses from the analog signals are sampled this is an ideal sampling method and cannot be easily implemented as we all know after that another type is the natural sampling a higher speed switch is turned on for only a small period of time when the sampling occurs the result is sequence of the sample that retains the shape of the analog signal the most common sampling method called sample sample and hold the most common sampling method is sample and hold however it creates a flat top samples by the using the circuit right so let's see how ideal sampling is taking the samples in the ideal sampling the pulses from the analog signals are sampled right this is an ideal sampling method and this is cannot be easily implemented as you can observe that this is an ideal sampling method we are measuring the amplitude of the signal at particular time and we are taking that samples at the particular time interval we can say that the ts right so this is the analog signal and the blue line is the sample at the particular time the sampling uh, the amplitude of the particular wave right after that the natural sampling so in the natural sampling a higher speed switch is turned on for the small period of time when the sample occurs the result is the sequence of the sample that retains the shape of the analog signals as you can observe in this figure that this is the analog signal for which we are going to sample the data here the high speed switch is turned on and off at the regular time interval right so we are measuring that signal at the particular time this signal is retains its shape because the high speed switch is turned on and off at the regular time interval for the small period right so we are getting the analog signal and uh, we are getting the sample of this analog signal in this way right after that the flat top sampling right the let's see the flat top sampling in the flat top sampling this is the most common sampling method or it is also called a uh, sample and hold it is it creates a flat top samples by the using the circuit right as you can observe that this is the flat top uh, sample by the uh, circuit right so this is how we are getting the flat top sampling right let's see the comparison between the ideal natural and the flat top right whenever we are doing the sample ideal sampling that, that is the only a one line uh, right so we are getting the particular amplitude at the particular time right after that whenever we are getting a natural sampling the high speed switch is turned on for the small period of time so the signal is retained its shape 
and uh, in the flat top sampling the circuits is are uh, used circuits are used and that are sample in the flat top manner right so all about the sampling right so ideal sampling natural sampling and the flat top sampling after that let's see the quantization uh, after uh, after sampling the data that sample data is move uh, move forward about the quantizer right so in the quantizer the quantization is uh, happen so what is the quantization it is the method to assign the integral value in the specific range to the sample instance right then the values are translated into the binary equivalent so let's see how the quantization is working the quantization is the method to assign a integral value in a specific range to sample instance then the values are translated into the binary equivalent each value is translated into its 7 bit binary equivalent and 8 bits indicates its sign right so let's see how the quantization is working so this is the sampled data right so first of all we have listed the pam pulse amplitude modulation value of that signal right the so we have we can say that the sampled data of the particular signal after getting the sample data we are uh, dividing that normalized amplitude into the chunks right or after a while by that we are getting the quantized code here we have made an seven layer right 0, 0, 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 right so we have divided that value from the zero this is minus delta minus 2 delta minus 3 delta or like that 1 delta 2 delta 3 delta and 4 delta and likewise right so whenever we are getting the pm value of that signal how we, we how we can convert that pm value into the normalized quantized value we will convert the pm signals into nearby its uh, level right so let's see the how the, this is uh, how we can convert the normalized pm value into the normalized quantized value so for first of all the first sample is at the minus 122 right so the, what is the nearby level or the near uh, the foremost nearby level is at the minus 120 uh, minus 150 right so the quantized value for that uh, for sampled signal is the minus 150 what is the difference of that the one minus 120 minus minus 122 right that is minus 130 my zero minus 0 0.38 and what is the code of the, what is the quantized code of that minus 150 that is 2 right so we will convert that quantized code into the encoded manner so what is the binary code of the 2 0 1 0 right so that's how we have convert that first sample of the signal into the encoded code like that let's move forward about the second uh, sample data after that the second sample data is at the uh, 1.50 right so what is the its nearby uh, quantized uh, value it is 150 only right so there are no variation between the pm value and the quantized value right so the normalized error is zero minus one 150 minus 150 is zero so the normalized error is zero the 1.5 is at the fifth level so the encoded the quantized code for that 1.5 is 5 and how we can represent the 5 into the binary the encoded value it is 101 right it is 101 after that let's move forward about the third sample of that analog signal which is 3.3.24 the normalized pm value for the third sample of the analog signal is 3.24 and which is the nearest uh, level of that 3.24 which is 3.50 right so what is the normalized quantized value is 3.50 for the measured sample data of the pm value which is, which is having the 3.24 so what is the quantized error here the quantized error is, is equal to no, the normalized quantized value minus the normalized pm value which is the normalized error right so normalized error is equal to minus 3.50 Normalized error is equal to 3.50 minus 3.24, which is which is minus 0.26, right? So uh, what is its code? 
it is three where the 3.5 is uh, the 3.5 is at the layer level 7 right so the quantization code for that 3.24 which is having the quant normalized quantization value is 3.50 the normalized error is the minus 20 0 0.26 the quantization code is that 7 so how we are representing the 7 into the uh, binary coded the encoded code for that signal uh, sample signal is 111 as we are representing 7 as the triple one that's how we are converting that sample data into the encoded manner right after that uh, after doing the sampling and the quantization that encoded code is given to the line coding techniques so what is the line coding techniques the line coding techniques are binary digit uh, is used for the converting the binary digits then translate into the digital signal using the digital to digital encoding techniques line coding the binary digit that uh, after getting the binary digit from the quantizer that binary digits then translated into the digital signal using the digital to digital encoding techniques right so line coding techniques have the various types right so nrz rz and the bypass in the nrz there are the two types nrz l and nrz i rz is that uh, non return to zero right so non return to zero after that the rz is that the which is the return to zero after that the biphase techniques there and in the biphase technique there are two subtypes manchester and the differential manchester we have seen the what is the line coding techniques in the brief in the our previous sessions right so this uh, this is how we are converting the analog signal into the digital signal right let's see how we are converting the analog signal into the digital data right so let's see how we are getting it right first of all we are getting an analog signal right so after getting the analog signals, we are giving that analog signals into the PAM, right? So pulse amplitude uh, mod modulation, we are getting the sampling there, right? So we are after getting the sampling, so in the sampling, we are measuring uh, uh, waves amplitude at the given time interval, right? So that's how we are measuring the amplitude at that signal at the particular time interval, right? after getting the sampling data we are giving that sample data to the quantizer right right after getting the sample data we are giving that sample data to the quantization mode right so quantization in the quantization what we are doing in the quantization mode we are getting the its level right the level of that sample data we are getting we are getting in the quantizer quantization movement mode right so after the getting the quantization and its binary code we are converting that sample data into the quantization code and after getting the quantization code we are do we are doing the binary encoding for that particular data right so that's how we are converting that analog signal into the binary encoded data after getting the binary encoded data we are applying the line coding techniques that's how we are transforming the analog signal into the digital signal right so in this session we have seen how we are converting the analog data into the digital data right and in this session we have seen how we are converting the analog signal into the digital data that which have the two techniques pam and the pcm we have seen both in the brief right so this is all about today's video thank you for the watching